Hello everybody, Matt here, and I'd like to introduce some Shucks previews for 2022. It's not long till our actual Shucks convention, and over a series of videos, we're gonna be showing you games that mostly are going to be at the convention. Now, importantly, these are not reviews. We haven't played a lot of these games. All we're gonna be doing is showing you what's in the box and giving you an outline of how these games play. No opinions here, no real editorial. Do not get it confused with our bread and butter stuff. But still, there's some exciting and interesting stuff here some of which has never been seen before. Exciting. Without further ado, please enjoy a selection of puzzle and abstracts. Turing Machine from Scorpion Musk, the creators of Stay Cool and Decrypto. What's behind the Scorpion Mask? Scorpions. It's just scorpions all the, way, all the way back. <laughs> Eyes, nose, mouth, all scorpions. Oh, doesn't bear thinking about. And they've made another game. It's tell called you, Turing Machine. I'll tell you what else doesn't bear thinking about. Oh no. Thinking. <laughs> And this, this game, it has thinking. It really makes you think, but mm -hmm. not in a way that's like philosophically pondering, in a way that just makes your brain hurt, mm. I think. I mean, but I think the way. most impressive thing about this is I still can't quite work out how it works. Yeah. And I think that Tom is going to struggle to even explain <laughs> how it works because of the fact that it doesn't work in a way that makes sense to human brains. Yeah. It's like, we've got all the components here, but I feel like it might still be a little bit tricky to piece together, but it's fine. Once you get playing, it all makes sense. Okay, so you're going to give it a go. I'm going to give it a good try. So, this is Turing Machine, and what we're trying to do in any given game of Turing Machine is get a three-digit code. So for the whole game, all you're trying to do is work out three numbers, and if you get that right, you win the game. And if you're the first person to get it right, I should say, that's how you win the game. If you're already slow, who cares? You didn't do the number I, as quick I as win, you could. I win my game. You win your personal game. You solve the puzzle on your own, but you don't win the game game. But I still get prizes, right? Don't be proud of yourself. Okay, so <laughs> but how, how on earth are we going to work out a three-digit code? Computers! Beep, 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 beep. Made of cardboard. Beep, beep, so the way this works is the first thing you're going to do in your turn, or which everyone does sort of simultaneously, is you're going to create a proposal. The proposal is basically just taking three of these little... You really fudged that, was, didn't you? Yeah, <laughs> that was just some of the worst B-roll I've ever done in my life. <laughs> you're going to take three of these, and you're going to... Boop. Oh, no, I took the so wrong one. So you're going to take blue one, yellow one, yellow three. Oh, yeah, yellow three. And purple. purple. Five. This is your proposal. It's the code that you think you're going to try and put to the test. What kind of test? You're going to test it with these verifiers. So on the table in the middle, you can see all these different verifiers, and they will give you a certain clue. They will tell you something about they'll, your proposal. They'll give you a piece of information about a part of the code. Yes, a little nugget. So for example here, this verifier is going to give you some information about which color is larger than your other colors. So in these examples, this verifier can tell you that blue is larger than the other two, yellow is larger than the other two, or purple is larger than the other two colors. How does that work? It's, it's just crazy. What you're yeah. going to do, you're going to take this little thing here, which is like this card that corresponds to that verifier, and you're going to slot it behind your cardboard computer, and only one symbol is going to be showing, and that's the symbol of whether or not it's giving you yes or no to the question that you've asked the verifier. However, we don't know which of the three questions that that verifier is right. asking is the one that it is asking. So this verifier could be confirming three things, either blue is larger, yellow is larger, or purple is larger. We don't know which. So by being like, ah, ah, it means your current proposal doesn't abide by one of those three verifier conditions, but you don't know which. But it's always going to be trying one of them each yes, time you do it. So exactly. one of these three things is being tested. You don't know what's being tested. Mm -hmm. So in this instance, we know that it's not that one, because that one says that purple is bigger than yellow yeah. and blue. And in this instance, because we've tested with these numbers, purple is bigger than yellow and blue. Mm -hmm. So if it was testing that one, yep. it would be a tick. So you can say, that isn't that condition. It's got to be one of the other two. And on your turn, you can do three different verifiers. So you'll test that code that you have against three of these different verifiers to try and work out what each one is giving you in terms of information. And you'll scrubble them all down on your note yeah. sheet that look something like these. Yeah, so we've got some little scrubbled note sheets of a, a little testy game we did earlier. And uh, yeah, I mean, my scrubbling is much more minimalist <laughs> than Tom's, if I'm honest. Uh, Tom had a, a real neat system going on. I really like my system. Yeah, I mean, your system is better than mine. I'm not, I'm not going to argue that. <laughs> but you'll see that you start to, the clever thing about this game is in the first few rounds, like you are just like shooting in the dark, trying to get yep. any information about the numbers. But in this instance, we know that if it's like, well, if it isn't this one, it doesn't mean that purple is larger than yellow and blue. It must be one of these two. And we know 
that that information, whatever ends up being the chosen of these three, is relevant to the code you're trying to crack. Yeah. So we know that purple is not going to be lar the largest mm -hmm. number. So we and know that purple can't be five. Yeah. So you can cross that out on your little sheet, and then you're narrowing down the uh, possibility space until you've got the exact right code. But the smart stuff is in asking the right questions with the right numbers at the right time, mm. so you can get the edge over your opponent. You can be the first to get the. It's code. all about that racing line. It just is trying to ask as few questions as possible, mm -hmm. and it's amazing how rapidly you can get to the answer. Yeah, it's uh, it's sometimes just a, a very small amount of questions, and mm. then you go by George. I've cracked the numbers. Who's George? We should also talk about the fact that in this game there's an app which will generate. A, or I don't know if it's an app or just a website. I'm not sure, but it will generate infinite different problems for you to solve, basically. I mean, is... the internet already generates infinite, <laughs> infinite problems. Do something new. <laughs> but can you solve them? No. no. <laughs> uh, and there's also like a scaling difficulty, so your first few puzzles can be quite easy, and then you can get harder and harder and harder as the game goes on. And you can introduce up to six different verifiers all firing off at the same time for those really knotty codes. Mm. This thing's weird. It's a weird thing. And you know, a shout out to the box, which is genuinely full of holes. In yeah. a way which uh, I find quite deeply exciting. <laughs> Audacious. This box has a hole in it. Can you see my face through the grid? I mean, I can. I don't know if anyone else can, but okay. that, I'm happy with that. That's probably enough of that now. Yeah, that's games. Turing machine. It's a computer made, made of cardboard. cardboard. Oh, that looks fit to print. Yeah. This is a board game about printing presses and the animals that created them. It's historically accurate, and Tom is going to be teaching us about how these animals invented arguably one of the most important uh, <laughs> technological advances within humanity. You did a very good job at getting what this game is pretty much bang on straight away just by looking at the cover. This is fit to print. Matt, we're going to be making a paper in real time. <sighs> Imagine if you combined Galaxy Trucker with the stress of newspapers. Hmm. Uh, the way this game works is really simple. It's a real-time game where we're going to be scrabbling for articles and ads and various bits and bobs of papers and then sticking them down into our big newspaper and printing it to try and get the most. Boy. So desperately just trying to fill the paper with content uh, as rapidly as possible. Mm -hmm. I've worked in print media and this is, <laughs> this is accurate. This might hit quite close to home if you've worked in print media, which you have. So the way this works, real simple. The first thing we do is we draw a breaking news card, which is mm -hmm. going to give us a sort of restriction for this round. So this one is, we may not cross the fold with our tiles. You'll see there's a little fold in the middle of the paper. And today is Friday. So today, we'll just be filling in the Friday it's section of the paper. Day. And then we go to the pub. And then we go to the Saturday. I have worked in print media, <laughs> <laughs> I can assure you. Um, and uh, yeah, just like real print media, the papers get bigger every day of the week until uh -huh. you know it wraps back round to, to, to Friday again. Well, when... The Sunday paper is, is notoriously so heavy and large that mm -hmm. you could drop it out of a window and hurt somebody. It would kill someone. Mm -hmm. The first thing we're going to do is the reporting phase. And then that's swiftly followed by the layout phase. But all of it happens in real time. We'll set a timer, which will be between three and five minutes, depending on how hard you want the game to be. And then we go. And we basically, one hand, scrabble and get these things. And then you slap them on your desk. You're just going to be putting them on the desk. And these are going to be ads. They're going to be articles. They're going to be pictures. And you're going to be like, oh, I want that. Do I want that? And if you don't want it, you can chuck it back into the middle. But only when you first pick it up. And does the things have to stay on my desk? Yeah, yeah they're all just going to pile up onto your desk. You're going to be piling up all of these different things. And then when you're ready, you go layout. Layout. I well done. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I've made the decision process a lot easier. Once you said layout, you're then going to organize the articles in your paper, also in real time, babbity boopity boopity bippity, adding all these things into your paper. So we'll just kind of just chuck them all in now. And then I'll tell you how bad you were at doing it mm. in just a moment. So you'll fill out your paper with all of this stuff. Then the first person to finish is going to grab this little timepiece in the middle. Ha ha, I finished before you while you were being slow and sluggish. Mm. Beep, 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 beep. What's that? It's the timer going off. Matt, you, you're done. What? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm sorry, not. buddy. No, you I are. I haven't finished my, my partially sideways <laughs> newspaper. <laughs> I really That's like... That's in the rules, right? I can have it, <laughs> have it all of the articles being entirely different directions. <laughs> like in a real newspaper when you've had a drink. Yeah, you've made a real mockery of a paper over there. I think you've somehow managed to like break every single placement rule in the game. Yeah. Which is fine because I, I didn't, didn't know what I was doing. Any of the rules. Mm. So what you're going to do is once you're done, once everyone's done, you then assess your papers for sort of damage uh, to see how, how good or bad they are. The important thing is you can't have things touching. So you've got adverts touching, that's bad. And if they're touching, you flip them over to the blank side. To become copy. 
Yeah, just to become a big stream of big old boring piece dullery, of newspaper. Dullery. Yeah, exactly. Articles, they also can't be the same colour next to each other. Right. Eh, eh, and you can't put photos next to each other either. So you right. want this, you kind of want to create a paper that looks like an actual real paper that has like a bunch of different stuff on yeah. it that's quite attractive to look at. Yeah, well now I've done that actually. Now I've made a newspaper using the rules of the game. <laughs> This is quite attractive. Yeah, that's looking good already. I mean, overall, this is a very attractive thing. Yeah, I it's about these. Game. I've got. You've got so much stuff. Managed to find space for Mr. Lion's adventure. Oh, I forgot announcing something. Announcing the Pan Animal Games. Oh no, Pan Animal Games tickets have been counterfeited. What? S some of these stories are popping off. <laughs> Look at that. That's crazy. I've got company chairperson shares profits, which is pretty good. Good. And flying band in basketball which is quite cute as well. That's I cute. actually forgot something, that you're meant to have a centerpiece story that goes right slap bang in the middle, which is gonna give you like a little scoring bonus for your paper as well. I'll go over what the scoring stuff is real quick, because it's nice and simple. You're basically just gonna get a bunch of points for all the stuff that you have, mm -hmm. especially if your little scoring criteria is extra good. Your photos act as multipliers for your score, for your scories, your scories, that's like a story, story score. And you're gonna get money for your ads, which are the ones that have little dollar signs. And at the end of the game, if you're the person who ran the fewest ads, you just lose. So that's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. That's, that is a, a cutting I know. Uh, Isn't that commentary brutal? On, on the media landscape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your paper just wasn't profitable enough. There's also a fun little thing that goes on here where if you have these little mood icons that you can see around here, you've got two little sad faces over there. It's gloomy news. It's gloomy news. And if you have an imbalance of gloomy to good news that's also bad you don't in, want that either in the uh, animal kingdom mm -hmm. news do you think that they lighten things up at the end with news about a skateboarding human <laughs> <laughs> a heartwarming story just, just a little last thing like an adopted rescue human as well or something like we that we have uh, a human doing some water skiing <laughs> Um, yeah, I think that's basically all of it to print. It's pretty straightforward. A real time making your paper game. It's got a turn based mode if you want to play it that way. Mm -hmm. And it's got a solo little puzzly mode where you have to make certain kinds of papers. And it's got this very scary looking score sheet, but it's all quite simple really. You've got your own and, little desk. and you've got your own desk. I love the fact that you have to pile all the papers onto your desk and yep. then like sift through them like, no, this is all rubbish. And you lose points if you have leftover papers. But of course you do. You can use them in the next paper. Mm. Groovy. Fit to print seems fit to ship. I like this. Yeah. This, uh, yeah. That's fun. An accidental opinion in today's. Oh no, shucks. Preview. You didn't hear that. We don't usually have opinions. It's not allowed. Let's do another video. Where? Hello and welcome to a shucks preview of Leaf from Weird City Games and Tim Eisner. This is a prototype version of Leaf, so we can't guarantee that everything's gonna appear like this in the final version. I assume the art is lovely enough that that's quite permanent, but I don't think the component quality or anything is relevant. Leaf is a game where you play the winds affecting the leaves and the things that does to the nature around them. I don't know if it makes thematic sense coherently, but it's got some pretty ideas in it. Um, the main thing that is happening on your turns is that you will be playing leaf cards from your hand. These leaf cards will let you take the top leaf of that type from these stacks of leaves over here, each of them in different colours as well as having different numbers of pointy bits. I don't know what the technical term is. Now when you play a leaf card you can play others of the same type to boost it and get more actions from it, but also you just have to place it so that it is touching leaves that already exist on the table in front of you. You then get actions tied to that leaf on the basis of the points where it is making contact. Green leaves will let you draw a leaf card, orange ones will let you gain an animal card, brown leaves will let you move up the tree with your little cheeky squirrel, yellow cards get you sun and red let you grow mushrooms. You're sort of building this area control map of leaves that are also giving you the actions that you want to pursue as you do it. And I have no idea how they worked out the maths of making it so that you could put these leaves together in the ways that you can. Uh, you'll also be collecting animal cards, and I'll be honest with you, some of these animal cards are like the prettiest animals I've ever seen in illustrations ever. 
And there's a lot of rules I haven't covered uh, because Riz is just a very quick preview. But the leaves are giving you these actions to boost mushrooms, get you leaf cards, get you sun, get you animals. And all of those things will allow you to take different sorts of actions on later turns and get points at the end of the game. But obviously the main appeal here is these beautiful leaves, these beautiful animals, and just getting to think really hard about exactly how you would put things on the forest floor. End of the game, you'll get scores for being the highest up the tree, having sun, acorns and leaf cards left over, and for the mushrooms that you'll get. This is going to be the bulk of the points because this is this multiplies the more areas of mushrooms you've got together with lots of adult mushrooms in there. Baby mushrooms will be wasted for this, so be careful to make sure that everything joins up nicely. You're also going to be closing off some of these places as you put things down, so you've got to set things up at the beginning so that later on it'll be working out. And that is Leaf. It's quite pretty. Matt, this is Evergreen from Horrible Guilds, the makers of things like The King's Dilemma mm -hmm. and Railroad Inc, and this is a, is a really nasty puzzle. Oh no, it looks like it has trees. It has trees. It's gorgeous, mm -hmm. but it's going to hurt your brain. Let me tell you how this one works. We start off nice and simple. This is like a pressure cooker for your brain where we slowly increase the pressure. The first thing we have is this little card drafting game where you choose a card and you add it into your little tableau in front of you. So I might take this wintry no, no, one. No, 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 no. Okay, okay, okay. You might take this little grassy one. Okay, great. And this is where you can place for this round. So you gotcha. can place things in the grassy biome for this round. Right. What can you do? You've got a little menu of options. Your options typically are to do with these little trees down here. Mm. You've got sprouts, junior trees. They grow into small trees. And then they grow into big trees. You've got some shrubs, some sprouts, some small trees, and some big trees already on your board. Yeah. You are going to sort of add a combination of these little things into your player board, depending on what card that you choose. And then over the course of the game, you're going to try and grow them into nice, big point scoring trees. We'll get to that in a second. But the other thing you get to do with your card is activate one of its special menu of powers at the top oh, here. Yeah, the little, little slots. That might let you grow trees. It might let you plant new ones. It might give you lakes that do a big explosion of growth, or it might give you shrubs that make your forests even larger. Then when you're done with all your actions, we'll check to see if it's the end of a season, which is when you have a certain number of cards in front of you. We start with a five round season, then four, then three, then two. And then when a season scores, this is the horrible part. This is the part that made my brain go, Ugh! You see this sun? Yeah. This is light that is pointing oh, okay. yep, at your little okay. field of trees. And of course, trees cast shadows. So if you have this big tree right here, that'll score you two points. But if it was blocking your little small tree because they cast a two space shadow, mm. that's not going to get you any points. But then each round, your sun moves yeah, around the board to lots of different little slots. Same system as in photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. A very three dimensional game with trees. Yeah, and we've not got a sort wooden of. Wooden trees and not as many trees. They're lovely wooden trees. We've got tons of them and you can be putting loads of them in this horrible grid, scoring a bunch of points to try and win the game. Good gravy. That is trees. That's trees. And got some little water bits as well. The little water bits make all the trees around them grow whoop, oh, in one just go. a little bit of splashing. A little, bit of, little bit of splashing, splashing around splashing and some trees. trees. I'm not, it's not playing the game right. I'm just putting things down, but I'm having a nice time, Tom. Yeah. It's important for me to have a nice time. You can also use this game as a children's playset. <laughs> Welcome to this little preview of Mountains Out of Molehills. This is a game of drafting and programming and digging and stacking and even toppling. In fact, it's, it's kind of got everything. There's two layers here and then this three-dimensional thing going on top. You've got to work out what is going to happen with it. So what is going to happen with it? Well, first of all, you will draft some cards to work out what actions you have available. Everyone's taking turns to do this, so you've got equal chance and you might want to grab something quickly because you're going to need it even though you might want to use it later in your turn. There's then a planning sort of phase where you arrange the cards that you've got in the draft and put them in an order that is the actions that you want to do that turn. Then everyone goes around one at a time without being able to reorder their stacks, drawing a card, taking an action, passing it on, drawing a card, taking an action. Now those actions will see these moles moving around the bottom of this little underground mining situation that we've got here. It will also see them moving this rock 
which might get in the way of other moles who are planning on doing something particular. And it will also see them digging the molehills of the title and turning them into the mountains of the title. So let's say my green mole there has just moved to this space. If they're able to build a molehill, they'll build one like that. That's nice. But what if they're able to build two? Another one comes in underneath. And this is important because in scoring, the scores are based both on the size of the molehill, but also who owns it, which is who can see the bottom molehill. Remember, you're the little moles in the bottom, so you're looking from the bottom up. So this is a green molehill. This is a yellow molehill. Now, that all sounds nice and easy, and you're just going to be trying to do the thing, but the key rule is that there is toppling. I think there are cards that enable you to topple things, but also if any mountain gets too high, it will just fall over. If you do that, you decide which direction it's going in, and you split it out. Bump, 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 making a load of other molehills bigger. Now that could trigger another topple, which means that another thing could happen as a result of that going in different directions and that could trigger a topple. And these molehills are never really removed from the game. If they go off the edge of the board, they're gone, they're out. But otherwise they don't get taken off. You do scoring at the end of each round to work out who's doing what, but it just builds up what will be happening later. A constantly building up landscape that I think is gonna get quite complicated to look at. Uh, but potentially be quite interesting. It's even got a naked mole rat, and I think that's really lovely, because I'm a big fan of naked mole rats, after someone did a thread on Twitter where they said they were really ugly but really interesting, and I'm like, no, they are beautiful and interesting. Go and read up about naked mole rats. They're weird. I love them.